Hi everyone, welcome back to the next diecast. In today's video, I'll be showing you and reviewing the 2018 scale 1971 Datsun 240Z made by Maisto. I got this model off of Amazon for around $26. It was actually from um, Amazon warehouse deals like that Porsche 550A Spider I reviewed um, in a previous video. Um, that was just a few dollars under um, its the regular price. You can find these um, online for generally, for generally between $25 and $40, depending on which site you actually um, uh, buy it from. And these do turn up at um, wholesale clubs such as Sam's Club and BJ's and, and, and Costco and whatnot. I know that um, this year at Sam's Club, uh, Maisto did release an exclusive, I think, green version. It had different wheels, kind of larger wheels with the larger tires, and um, they, were a, they were a Falcon branded tires. I think there was some like mirrors up here or something like that. Um, but the two regular colors that Maisto has this in currently are, are this cool orange you see here and also kind of a dark, I think it's a metallic dark blue. And in the past they also sold this um, in bright yellow and I think a metallic green. Um, but overall I think this is a good model. There are a few details that are, you know, missing um, here and there, but I think for a budget model of the 240Z it's a pretty solid buy. Um, Road Signatures, or Yatming, also makes a 240Z. I think theirs is a 1969 model. I may actually compare that model with um, this model in a future video, because my dad actually has um, that other uh, model. Uh, but overall, I think the details on this model are, uh, are, are well done for the most part. So we'll go ahead and get into the details of the model here. We'll start up here with the front. Nice job with these headlights here. They do have a peg in the center of each of them, but I assume that's where the bulb would be if this car were the uh, real car, so I don't think that's a big deal. They do a good job with the overall shape of them, too. Um, in the center here, you do see this uh, kind of three-dimensional looking Datsun badge. I think uh, Meister did a great job with that. It's not a separate piece, but it's actually kind of a three-dimensional metal, um, I shouldn't say engraving, but it's integrated into the hood. Like it's, like it's part of the hood, but it's actually very well painted and kind of looks like a three-dimensional badge. This grill down here is not perforated, unfortunately, but it kind of looks like it is from a distance and it is a separate piece, so that's nice to see. You see you do have the California uh, uh, license plate down here, too. And they also do a great job with this chrome uh, bumper on here, too. I always like the chrome bumpers on the on the 240 z And the bumpers are actually uh, nice and tight. Some of my those classic car models have loose bumpers, but on here you do not see that. Um, taking a look at the side, these turn signals that you see both in the front and in the back here, they're just painted on, but at least they are kind of three-dimensional looking. Though the orange does kind of blend in with the orange paint of the uh, car. If you were to get the dark blue version or the other colors, you would actually be able to see this, this amber turn signal better. And speaking of the paint, the paint quality on here is um, definitely uh, flawless, I would say. Very smooth throughout. There, there's no um, orange peel, um, just a nice smooth finish and everything throughout. The orange is not a metallic color, but I believe the dark blue is a metallic finish. And the yellow, I'm not too sure, but I think all the colors honestly look great um, on this particular model. And I did actually um, purposely choose the orange version because I thought it looked awesome and because I thought it would look good with my Maisto 350Z here. Um, I do frequently put these up on the shelf together because they look really, really cool. And, then, and the really cool thing is that if you get the dark blue 240Z, Maisto actually used to make the 350Z. Um, in a dark blue paint too. So I think that's awesome that they've done that. And I'm hoping they make a model of the upcoming uh, Nissan 400Z too, which should be coming out soon. So awesome to, to uh, see that. Um, but taking a look once again at the side, you have that nice kind of large, bold Datsun um, inscription on either side of the offender there. Nicely done, kind of embossed on there with that silver paint. They also do a good job with these uh, wheels, too. I always like these kind of black five spokes that the uh, 240Z came standard with. You have kind of a matte finish in the center of the rim and kind of a chrome finish on the edge there. I think Meister did a good job with the overall look and everything like that. Might be a little bit on the smaller side, but I think the overall look um, is uh, very well done. Of course, you get full steering on this model and the suspension, too. Although the suspension on here is kind of... Like, you can hear it. it it's kind of loud. You're, you kind of think it's going to get jammed and stuff. That could just be a factory defect for um, my model, but just be careful with that. You don't want to be pushing it too much, I guess, or else it could get jammed up and stuff like that. 
Um, they do a good job with the overall, I guess, silver trim work around the windows and, and the windshield. It kind of makes a nice um, accent piece. And this Z badge back here, similar to that badge in the front, it's kind of a three-dimensional looking uh, badge and it looks really well done. You see the Z is kind of clearly printed on there um, in the center. So that is awesome to see that. And this, I guess, would be the uh, antenna. Instead of doing like a separate plastic um, raised up um, antenna, what they do is they actually in integrate the antenna retracted into the car with this kind of like metal um, like lump here, I guess you can call it. I guess it would have been nice to have a separate um, antenna piece, but if they did that, it probably would have been chrome and probably would have been loose. So I guess it's good that they went with having it kind of uh, retracted in like that and as like a metal piece. But um, it does stick out a little bit because it is painted um, in silver. So that's nice to say. Here's those rear um, indicators there. Nice looking rear uh, bumper. I like, how it had a, I like how it has that kind of black trim around it. You also see that up here on the front uh, bumper too. And then on the rear um, lift gate, you do see the Datsun 240Z badging, which is also very well done. Meister always does a good kind of clear um, paint job with these badges that they put on their models. And that's always uh, very cool to us say. I almost kind of uh, prefer these over separately uh, molded badges because these are, you know, always printed clearly and everything. You don't, you know, they're not going to fall off or anything like that. So I think they did a great job. Back here. I, I would say that the taillights are fairly well done. There are some pegs, but they're actually kind of hard to see. They're a little bit fogged over actually by, by the taillight piece. And you can see this is a little bit loose, but I'm sure that that's just on the factory defect. You can always just take that out and put a little drop of glue on it. Uh, but the overall shape and everything, they do an excellent job with. Um, just like the real car, this is surrounded um, in kind of like a matte black finish. And you do have this uh, California plate back here too. They have the uh, exhaust pipe back here too. It's kind of uh, hollowed out, I guess, but it is fully in chrome, so it does look a slight bit cheap, but at least they have it on there as the proper size and shape. Now, in terms of opening features on this model, um, we'll, be, we'll begin back here with the rear trunk. This is kind of like a hatchback coupe, similar to the, uh, to the F350Z and, and the 370Z that came um, in, in the 2000s, but this kind of uh, lifts up like so. Not too much to see in this rear kind of trunk area back here. There is some kind of diamond stitch pattern along the wheel wells on here, which is very cool to see. Um, I don't know if that would be like leather on the real car or something. And this area is just kind of smooth. There's no, of course, they don't get, you know, carpeting um, or anything like that. But um, it's nice and well uh, finished in here. And Maestro actually does fully paint the underside of this uh, rear hatch, which is nice to us see. But yeah, there's not too much to really see back here, but I think they do a good job with the overall shape and like the dimensions and, and the uh, textures and everything. So we'll close that up. We'll take a look next at the engine detailing of this model here. The hood will open up like so. The engine detailing, um, I would say, I, I'd say it could use a little bit more detailing. Um, it is just kind of one plastic piece. They do, a, I guess, a decent job with it. You see it has the Nissan something. What does that say? Nissan... C80, I'm not really too sure what that actually says past the Nissan. Um, but all the coloring in there and everything I would say is uh, fairly well done. You see they got kind of these blue wires going across that silver part there. You have this kind of orange band back here with what looks like warning labels. And the engine piece itself is not loose or anything. I know a lot of these kind of one piece uh, Maisto engines will have that problem occasionally where they're loose like when you move them or touch them and stuff. Uh, but on here you don't really see that. I wish it was kind of a more three-dimensional piece. You know, a lot of their classic car models do have kind of multi-piece engines that look uh, very well done. This one, not so much, I guess, but I guess that that's not um, too big of a deal, considering that this is, you know, like a budget model and you can get it for $15 in some cases. But decently detailed overall, but I would say um, it could use a little bit more, maybe coloring or uh, depth to it. And the underside of the hood is actually uh, fully painted too. Nice to see that. All right, we'll take a look next at the interior of this model. The doors open up like so. They're actually very tight. Um, I think the overall build quality of this model is um, excellent, which is always good to us say. The doors don't open very wide, but I do like how they have the kind of frame on them that opens up uh, with, with the door. Door panel detailing, not too much to really see, but they do a good job with, the, like, with that like leather texture you see around it there. And there is kind of that window winder down there. It looks like a, it looks like it's actually a separate piece that you can move. So that's a very cool touch. And kind of that functional door pocket down there. 
And there is some kind of silver handle, I guess, down there. I guess you might be able to pull the door shut with, with that. And same thing for the uh, driver's side door panel detailing. Very well done. Um, oh, you also do get the uh, side mirror on here, too. I did forget to mention that. Um, it, it is all chromed out, but I believe that is actually proper. And it's actually a nice and tightly um, fitting on there. It's not going to, you know, fall off. Let's take a look next. Um, so the seat detailing, very well done. I think Mice did an excellent job with the overall shape and size of these seats and also the uh, texture too. It kind of feels like leather uh, when, when like you run um, your finger um, on them and everything. And they're nice and tight too. They're not gonna, you know, fall out or anything. Nice to uh, see that. We'll take a look next at the dashboard detailing. You do get a decent amount of buttons in this kind of center stack on here. A lot of them are colored in, but some of them aren't, but at least Maisto actually does kind of make them have like a three-dimensional look to them, so it looks like they're actual buttons. And the dashboard does kind of have that nice at least leather pattern to it. Um, and you do kind of see that vent back there, too. There are some gauges in the center there and behind the steering wheel. There are just stickers for the gauges, but at least they look good and they do look up proper to what the real car would actually have. Um, and in the center there, you do see some detailing on, on the center console with the shifter, which is tipped in orange along with the steering wheel, and that a separate um, um, handbrake on there, too. I do like how the steering wheel kind of matches the outside of the car. I don't know if on the other colors of this model, if they would also have the uh, orange trim steering wheel, but with the orange model, I think it looks uh, really, really cool. Um, you have kind of a nice kind of glossy finish to the perimeter of the steering wheel. You do have kind of a three-spoke design with holes in um, each of the spokes, along with a little tiny dots and badge in the center there. Um, very well done. And you do get pedals down there too. They're just kind of hard to see because this is a black um, interior. So I may actually paint the, or I may actually color those in with like a silver Sharpie or something just to add some more um, detail to them. And the doors do open up on dog leg um, hinges. So I guess that does kind of um, contribute to their kind of tight, um, opening and closing, but I don't think that's a big deal because you know that they're going to last for um, quite some time in that sense. So overall, I think Meister did a, did a good job with this um, interior. Could use, I guess, a little bit more finer detailing here and there, but I think for a budget model and, and for a Meister, they did do um, a solid job. Same thing with the uh, engine, too. We'll take a look next at the undercarriage of this model. So not really too much to really see down here. Um, you do have the exhaust system kind of chromed out, um, but that's kind of the case for most of these uh, Maisto models. So I don't think, I wish they could have added maybe, instead of having a chrome, have it like be painted silver. A few of their models they have done that with, but in most cases you are gonna see kind of the chrome um, exhaust pipes in there. But there is a little bit of detailing, I guess, in, in the center here, like with the uh, like with uh, this portion and everything. Of course, a lot of it is taken up by all these uh, different screws and everything, so. But I would say they do, I would say it, it's a decent, um, detailed job for a Maisto um, undercarriage for sure. Overall, I think Maisto did a good job with um, capturing the details of the Datsun um, 240Z. They've been selling this model for about 10 or 12 years now. Um, and it is fairly widely available, I suppose. Of course, some colors are going to be harder to find than um, the other colors and everything. They also make kind of a modified version in their Maisto design line. I think it's red with kind of um, these huge wheel wells and like the big wheels with like the Falcon tires on them and stuff. The details to that are gonna be similar in terms of like the engine and the interior, but I think some of the exterior details are gonna be different. But I think the overall quality of that model and that exclusive Sam's Club model that came out with those different wheels and everything, they're all gonna, they're all gonna, gonna be similar. So I would say it ultimately comes down to if you want kind of like the regular stock um, Datsun 240Z that Maisto has made or that kind of a modified version with those, uh, you know, custom wheels and like those mirrors and those added um, wheel wells and everything like that. But um, overall, if you're a fan of, you know, Datsun or, or a Nissan or, you know, the Z car in general, like I am, this would be a really good car to add to your collection. Um, and I would highly recommend getting it if you can find one for a good price. As always, I hope this video was uh, helpful and feel free to comment down below with your thoughts on this uh, Datsun. And if um, you have one, or if, if you did what I did and got one to go with your modern Z. So I guess I'll end off with having these two kind of in the, uh, in the uh, frame here like this. <laughs> Thanks for watching.